how's everybody doing today? This week I would like to cover the subject of luminosity range masking. But before I dig into that, I just want to give everybody a couple tips. Now these aren't new tips, we've all heard them before, but it never hurts to hear them again because if you're like me, I get rushing around and I always forget. But I went to this place here, Pemaquid Point in Maine, to get specifically to get this picture, to get a sunset picture of the lighthouse. But when you take the time to go to a place like this, don't forget, take your time. Because if you hang around and let Mother Nature finish, you will find that you can find other photographs like this one. Now this is one we're going to work on a little bit later, but it still has a lot of good color in the skies. A lot of this magenta and orange can make a beautiful picture. And the other thing to remember, and I always forget this, and I'm always surprised when I remember it and turn around, but look behind you. You never know what's behind you. This is what was behind me when I took the picture at Pemaquid Point. So don't just go for the picture. Remember to hang around for Mother Nature to finish and always, always look behind you. You can be surprised what you find. All right, so let's jump into luminosity masking. Now, luminosity masking is, is a way that we can mask off and set a range of luminance in, in a photograph. And it's a very really powerful tool, but it's also real finicky. So with this mask, it's one of the most important things to remember is you really have to tweak it and refine it so you can get it to only affect those areas of the, of the photograph you want to change. And be sure you get a good feather or fall off, and we'll go through that. It's, it's my opinion when I'm using luminosity masking, it should be used sparingly and it should be used to make fine adjustments. You're not gonna get a big range of adjustments uh, when you use luminosity mask and you shouldn't expect that. You should only uh, attack specific areas of your photograph with luminosity range masking and look for those fine adjustments and those fine changes. If you keep that in mind, this tool will work great, do great things for you, all right? So to start right off, Let's grab our luminosity mask, and that's found under the masking button under range, luminosity range, or luminance range. You can also get to the same thing by hitting the shift Q uh, as your shortcut, and it will launch the luminance range mask. So we'll go ahead and launch it, and we'll open up our range mask here. Now, to set your luminance range, you can do one of two things. You can click on a specific area, and when you do, I have my overlay turned on and it's set to green. So we're seeing those areas that are in the luminous range of the single pixel I picked on here. All right. It will go ahead and set a range for you on your ranging tool over here. And we'll talk about that in just a second. The next thing you can do is that you can hold your mouse button down and draw a square over a certain area and it will grab the average of the luminance range within that square you drew. So you can see our mask has changed just a little bit based on where we select it. Now that's one of the great things about this tool is that you're not constrained to that first selection. You can change it to any selection you want until you get it just the way you want. So this is the first step in determining what your range is going to be. Now you can see here the clouds aren't covered up with the green, so that means they're not being affected by the mask. But let's say I did want them affected, so I could draw a range mask kind of like this. So now you can see all the sky is being affected, including the clouds. Again, that's not what I want, and I'll tell you, because what I'm looking for is a range mask of the sunset here is where all the powerful light is and it is tailing off as it gets further from the light source and that's what I want my mask to reflect. I don't want to put a sky mask on so when I move my sliders it affects everything in the sky. I only want to affect this area right here. So let's try another area of uh, square. Turn our overlay on and you can see this one looks a little better. I'm not really worried about the clouds because I want to control the light, not so much the clouds, but where the clouds are being lit up by the sun, you can see they're being affected. I'm going to try one more here. 
that looks a little better. So the areas of green are the luminance areas that are affected and that will uh, take the effect that I apply. So if I apply exposure here, you can see that only those areas that were in green, and I'll turn the overlay back on so you can see, those are the only areas that are being affected. Now we can change or modify these areas by the use of our tool up here. Now let me explain the mechanics of this. So the core area is in this bounding box right here. Anything in that bounding box is affected 100% by our changes. Anything in the areas to the left, which is our darks, this is our feather or what we call fall off. As we change this, let me turn our overlay on, you can see that the areas of the feather get bigger and smaller. And this is a real important setting that we'll have to play with because if we have it down close to the core area, we don't have much of a feather, it's not going to look natural. So you can see right here, it's almost like we have a halo. But as we bring out our fall off, it naturally blends in and we don't see that light change as bad. So that's the other tweak that we have to take into consideration. Our core area, which is the area that is primarily where we will be affecting, and then our fall off. Now we have another tool we call the luminance, luminance mask. If we turn that on, it does two things. Our overlay turns red and our photograph turns black and white. And if you're familiar with luminance masking in Photoshop, you know everything is in black and white. White reveals, black conceals. So this just helps us, if you're familiar with masking, it just helps us a little more to see what's going to be affected and which, which is not. So here we're going we're gonna to mess with our fall off and get that about where we want. Turn this off. So now as I make my changes, I can bring my highlights down, bring my shadows up a little bit, and remember we're looking for subtle changes, not big changes. Maybe get a little white, add a little clarity, and maybe boost up the saturation just a little bit, and add a little magenta because that's what we usually find in our sunsets. So with our luminous range set, we can make these changes, and if we look at our before, and our after, before, after, you can see we've made a really nice change to our sunset, brought out the clouds here, while we still left this area in dark so that it looks more natural because we have our light streaming towards that area, but we do have fall off. Now, uh, just to cover a few more mechanics of this, this mask, is that this core area, you notice, has a little dot in it. And if we grab this dot, we can move it and change the area of core light change, or core luminance change. But of course, you know, as we do this, we see that our fall off changes. So here we have our fall off on our lights, and here we have our fall off on our darks. All we have to do is measure this out so that our fall off looks more natural. And then we don't have that big aurora kind of change right here. It still looks a little uh, uh, I, too much of a change. I'll probably bring this back down just a little bit. But again, our before and after, before and after. All right, now that we've looked at this picture, let's move on to another one. And I'm going to show you how to use our luminosity masking in a very specific area or a very, very specific way. So what we want to do when using our luminosity mask in this photograph is that we want to affect just very specific areas but if we just put a luminosity mask on and say we just wanted to we just wanted to bring out the, the icicles here that's all we want to do. So we'll choose our range on our luminance mask we'll choose our icicles and when we do that you see the luminance range in these icicles is a lot like this whole photograph. I mean, we can start narrowing it down to where we get just our icicles, but again, the water, everything here is near the same luminance range, so it's just turned into a big old mask that is going to be hard to manage. But what we can do is use our intersect feature, and when we use our intersect, 
we're going to specifically define the area we want to affect and then using an intersect with luminance we will be able to only change the luminance of those areas within our first mask and let me demonstrate that it's very simple we're going to start out with a brush and we are going to set our flow at 100 percent we're going to have a 100% feather because we want to have soft edges around the area we're going to affect. And now we're going to reduce our brush size and we're just going to paint in those areas that we want to affect. And we don't have to be real specific because remember the luminance mask when we intersect is only going to grab the luminance of the areas that are in the green. And that's what's so good about an intersect mask is that we define an area and then we say the only thing I want to intersect, the only thing I want to change is the luminance value of a specific thing within the mask. All right, so now we go to our mask one. We click intersect with luminance range. And now we do everything that we did that I just showed you. We pick an area of luminance that we want to affect this is going to be very specific and now you see just the area that contains that luminance is the one that's affected now again we can fiddle with our, our fall off we can change our core area if we want to make it more specific but that looks pretty good so everything in green and we'll turn our luminance mask on and remember, we're not looking at this area because only the area where the green was is what's going to be affected. All right. So we're looking here at our mask. It looks like it's covering all the icicles pretty good. Let's turn off the luminance mask. And now we can see specifically the areas that are going to be affected. So all we did is that we painted on the area, a general area that we want to affect. And then with the luminance range intersect, we just bring out those areas that we want to change. So now let's go and make our changes. We're going to brighten these up. Again, I'm going to harp on you about this. Subtle changes, all right? Subtle changes. Maybe the highlights a little bit. Maybe our whites. Let's look at our clarity. Make these icicles a little more crunchy. I don't think dehaze is going to help us here. Well, maybe a little bit. All right, so now we have affected just those icicles. So if we look at our before and after, before and after, we were able to make changes to just this area and nothing else. So let's take it just one more step further, just to demonstrate this again. We're gonna go up, we're gonna grab our brush, and all I wanna affect is this bright area up here and my waterfall. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to cover up all the areas that the waterfall with those bright luminance values are affected, like this. And then I'm going to go to my mask that we just created. I'm going to intersect with luminance. And now I want to pick an area that best represents the luminance I'm looking for. So that looks pretty good. We might be able to make it a little better. Let's look down here. Nope. I'll say that looks pretty good. So what we want to do now is maybe bring this out a little bit so we cover more darks and use our fall off to see if we can bring anything else in. Okay. So it looks like we want to darken this area up here and we want to affect our waterfall. It looks like we're hitting just about every area. If there's any area that you want to add to it, like right up here, we kind of missed this. All we have to do is click add with a brush and we can just paint it in. If it matches the luminance that we want to use, it'll grab it. Like right here. All right, so now that we've determined with our luminance, this is the area that we want to affect. Now let's, I'm going to turn my overlay off because I want to see what we're doing here. I might want to bring the exposure down just a little bit. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Subtle changes, subtle changes. So we're bringing this down. I want to increase my clarity a little bit. 
might bring up the temperature because this looks a little blue and it should be blue because we're in the shadows but I just want it to be a little whiter anyway let's see if uh, details does anything for us not really much let's look at our before and after before and after see there's subtle changes but we get a better definition of our icicles over here and we get a better definition of the water as it flows over these rocks so I hope this helped you out in seeing what a luminosity mask can do for you whether you're using it to bring the colors out of the sky by more of a broad range luminosity mask or whether you're defining an area with your brush and then intersecting it with a luminosity mask you can see how it brings just subtle changes but changes that really make a good effect to your photographs if you guys have any questions or you need more demos or more explanation of this tool please don't hesitate to send me an email drop me a note and i'll be glad to help you out any way i can you guys have a good day i'll talk to you soon